G'day guys, it's Ricky here, and um, I'm going to do an update on my aquaponics setup, and a little bit about my bees as well. Um, I've been wanting to do this update for a while, and I just don't get around to doing it, so I've thought, bugger it, I'll just do it now, and just chuck whatever comes up onto uh, my YouTube channel. This is the... Um, first IBC which will be going into the ground beside the greenhouse and I got the second one there as well ready ready to start working on it um, I've put treated pine sleepers around and I um, lined up these holes here um, to go onto these rails um, I've put a lot of I put basically screws in each one because I was worried about this um, shrinking and pulling this nice hardwood top off so I went a bit overkill and uh, I couldn't get 60 millimeter screws so I had to countersink it in 10 mil which um, I don't know doesn't look as good as if I had 60 mil screws it would be better uh, down the bottom there I've cut off the end I've cut the tap off because there's no point having a tap buried and it's probably going to um, and I figure I can use the tap as well so uh, I found there's a certain spot where you cut it and uh, a 40 mil pressure pipe just fits in quite snugly and uh, on the other side I put a 40 mil coupling pressure pipe coupling and I just sanded the bottom off it a little bit flat so that um, it fits in better um, and then um, I go on to 50 mil um, with the reducer in there to 40 to a uh, coupling to this um, arrangement with this um, shroudy thing. Uh, so that basically will go on there, it just slides on, it goes on quite nicely. Pretty much like that. Uh, I'll put this thing here for no particular reason apart from just having access to the plumbing from the outside and I figure I can use it to flush or I might come up with other ideas I might want to use it for yet. So what ends up happening is that will continue down to the second one to that T piece down there and there's also an interconnecting piece there as well which goes through to the second one and I was also thinking about putting another one in here with a, an elbow coming out to here somewhere which will be for future grow bed um, drainage back into this will be my fish tank right? and then that that taiki tub I think they call it pronounced taiki tubs it'll sit on the top from here all the way to the second one and so there'll be access into the fish tank here and this this will be like this will be ground level here so it'll be right in the ground um and so it comes we'll come back to here and i've really had to give a lot of thought of how i put this in the ground and preparing everything so the big day will come soon where i get to put one in and then i'll put the second one in and i have to keep digging and put the third one in the fourth one and on and on it goes. I'm thinking, even thinking about putting a duckaponics type of arrangement in where I um, where uh, ducks will have access to the water uh, the final use, well the second last use of the water will go to the ducks and then um, that water then will go off into my irrigation system around the house. Uh, so you can see I've been busy, junks everywhere motorbikes that I haven't got around to fixing up and um, me and a mate got some pallets the other day um, we figured that we can make ourselves some um, wire hives so we anyway having a bit of a muck around with that it's costing us nothing to play with and this is our first wire hive box 
uh, it's got the rebate in there and the top bars will sit on top as well so this will probably be one video dedicated to this once they're actually all finished but basically all the wood costs nothing just a lot of labor involved um, my beehives are still going okay it's winter still and it's quite cold at the moment and uh, you know, there's no activity now because it's too cold there's a couple of little ones just going out having a little look but they're too cold anyway I'll keep on moving because uh, otherwise the video ends up going for bloody ages and uh, there's a bit more wood there we, we've taken from the pallets which we're going to make into these ware hives. Um, really excited about beekeeping season. I've got, all, I've got four of these hives at the bottoms there, ready to ready to uh, ready for hives basically ready for uh, splitting hives and catching swarms and, and all that I had a pump failure the other day this pump failed on me um, I haven't had a chance to work out what I guess we can circuit breaker tripped out or the circuit breaker so well it was a circuit breaker I don't know if it went out on earth leakage or not uh, so that's a pain in the butt. Um, a big scramble. I come back from night shift and uh, realised that pump wasn't working, so I had to bring another one out and get it working, which was lucky I had, I guess. My pump just kicked in, and this pump that I've got is actually a lot no more noisier. And it was a more expensive one too. It's one of those ones you see at Bunnings, it's called a legend. And you put a most trout. I had two trout the other day. I pulled them out. We smoked them. My first smoking effort was not too bad. This uh, grow bed on top. This is a basically a, is different from the last video. Um, I put one of these on here, and uh, there's some growth going here. There's a lot of new growth that I've just planted recently. Hopefully I'm getting some kale out of that because I wanted to have a go at growing some kale. And how I've got that arranged. I'm trying to make it quiet for the neighbours. This is how I've done this. shown this before in the video but that's my PowerPoint in there and irrigation system and my pump which is on a timer I give it a rest every hour for 15 minutes because in summer they get pretty hot and these guys have got plenty of aeration anyway there's about 600 litres in here I think there's about six trout left from last year Garden's just hopeless. I haven't really put much effort into doing. Got a Jerusalem art, no, not Jerusalem art, artichoke. The normal artichoke down there is going great. Um, well, before I go into this greenhouse, I'll show you. This is the big hole in the ground, and I've had to put this uh, up so that the, uh, the dog can't. We've got an old dog, and uh, if she falls in it, I'd be in heaps of trouble. But this hole is ready to go, ready for me to slide that first IBC into here. And uh, I've got those two pipes there. They actually go through to the pond in there. And I've um, uh, got them coming out along and they're gonna, well, um, gonna go into the middle, two middle IBCs. And the two bottom pipes there, they, they're coming from the greenhouse, so yes, it's not it's probably hard to work out from just looking at this video, but yes, hopefully, hopefully it all makes sense one day. Uh, quick update on my chickens, um, I've 
put all the chickens together now because I um, little chicks there I was a bit worried about boss lady having a go at them but everybody's happily mingling at the moment boss lady and six aracuna um, I guess they're three and a half weeks old now I've got one lavender in all that and so mum is that one I think no mum yeah mum's that one got oh, surrogate mum and kind of like auntie <laughs> to them and our aracuna lady which I'm waiting for the first egg to or after winter and our chocolate silky one houses are all doing good dogs doing good everything's doing pretty good in here it's doing great um, I'll open the doors up and make a view from from the outside this is my sanctuary when it's really cold outside I can come here after work or whatever and get lost in here I'll go through all the plants first uh, this is these are um, snow peas and I'm getting flowers on them so should be getting something soon um, I put some flowers seeds in the background I figure what I'm having problems with is harvesting them uh, at the backs um, so I'm thinking of putting more flowers at the back so they just I don't have to worry about them and hopefully they're bringing in um, better insects the uh, better insects like insects like predator insects that get all the other ones and uh, there's a lot of a lot of activity around here yeah, um, lettuce in the background and another sort of lettuce here I'm trying lots of different sorts of lettuce this is quite a nice one and uh, this silver beet different sorts are going great uh, really quite healthy at the moment broccoli I'm pretty happy with takes up a lot of room though but uh, I'm, I'm planning to juice them uh, all the leaves and everything because uh, I've got a new juicer now all broccoli, lettuces um, I don't know, I'm starting to forget what I put in there more lettuce, this is my lettuce bed basically um, that I've been eating from every day I've been putting in smoothies I'll try the camera back here maybe it's a better view um, I'll put carrots in amongst them as well and that seems to work okay as a technique seeding the carrots and the, and the lettuce at the same time seems to work all right um, this bed I, I just started uh, I, I, I seeded with lettuce seeds as well and I just put a mixture of different seeds and I haven't really got to eating this one yet they do get insects on them sometimes this little aphidy things there I'll just take that out and I'll give it to the silver perch got silver perch in there my pH I've got a white so I've got a it's at 5 or 9 so it's sort of I've got to do something about the pH I've got to put a big block of limestone in there or something to just drive it up to 6.2 or something um, more more of these uh, snow peas and there's some broad beans in amongst it and there is still a um, celery plant in there hiding away my wife is calling this the lettuce sanctuary but uh, I do I do hunt in here for lettuce will be and more more of this uh, snow peas on this side uh, the grass has been a lot better this year after the system's been going for a year. Um, lots of different. I like the silver beet. This grass is so good, and I use it every day, even if I put it in smoothies. I've got this red sort of stalky one and the yellow stalky one, and all different varieties in there. Looking good. Um, 
that choy which I should just pull out and juice or something. More lettuce that I'm not even getting to. This mustard greens and some sort of a cresty thing. Um, I'm not sure what this is. I'm hoping that's maybe spinach or kale or something. Oh, that's the kale, I think. That looks like kale, doesn't it? I think it is. Uh, yeah, cool. Got some kale growing. Hey. More lettuce. These uh, gerberas have been pretty good. Uh, grew them from seed and some, find lots of little spiders seem to be happy in there. More silver beet and this eggplant which, uh, geez, they attract a lot of insects and looks terrible, but uh, maybe I should just chop it back now because there's still new growth sort of coming on it. I might have a head start for next year. Um, yeah, so that's all the plants I've got in here. Oh, these plants I've got, which is uh, this Azola. These, uh, this grows so much better than the duckweed. This is my duckweed pond. And I find um, this Azola grows so much better in uh, winter, at least. Maybe this kicks in better in summer. Um, but I've put the duckweed and the Azola. Um, a beekeeping friend gave me this because it's good for bees to land on and they can get in there and they can drink the water. Um, but I've given my silver perch this and the duckweed at the same time and, and just see which one's what they prefer. And they actually prefer to eat the Azola. Um, oops, I'm just going to have to put the camera on a funny angle. Just turning the air pumps off because they're too noisy. Um, yeah, so... Uh, what can I say? This, these ponds here were from my original system, so um, I'm, what I'm going to do is just duplicate what I've got on the right onto the left. So I'm going to remove these two and put two more IBCs in because greenhouse space is just too valuable to, um, you know, just throw away. <laughs> basically so what I'm thinking about I still like the idea of growing the duckweed and the azola or mainly the azola now um, because the silver perch like it and uh, it's kind of cool to and the chooks chooks love it they go nuts over the stuff um, I won't feed them now <laughs> um, so uh, I'm gonna have one more IBC which will be for plants and then maybe the closest one on this side will be the uh, grow a bed, which I'll just have on the top, I'll just have a uh, deep water culture type thing with just the duckweed on top, so it should be okay. Um, these these uh, covers, I'll go, I'll go into the fish now, so this is fish section, so maybe I might even chop the video up if I can learn how to do that. Uh, these fish feeders are, are quite good, I've, but they do fail. And, and Actually, 10 o'clock, they go on at 10, 12, 13, and 15, and um, so they're all actually due to turn on now. That one's actually going. I had failures with these pumps, uh, these pumps, uh, with these fish feeders. They have actually failed in the past, and they can fail in two ways. They can, uh, um, a little mechanism inside can break, and that causes... Um, causes it not to not to uh, give out any food, and then there's another one where the micro switch or electronics fails in it, and uh, causes the um, causes the fish feeder to keep giving food until basically it, all the food runs out. Um, this one here, I've put some sick sick trout in. I had two not, and this is where my six amigo goldfish, I call them six amigo, they're here, they're just getting massive goldfish. Uh, every time I see a trout which is looking okay, I'll put him in with the others. I 
got a, another supplementary pump there pumping it around. So there is that's one trout tank. And at the moment I've got I'll start here too. At the moment I've got some oyster shells in there. I'm gonna put more oyster shells in there. This is where my pump lives at the moment for this system. Remember the uh, one the pond is actually a separate system at the moment. It's not connected because of all the work I've been doing. Uh, so all that water um, comes back through this standpipe arrangement. So uh, tends to drop the water of the sump in here down, and the water from all the other tanks come back via here. What I could do is put a sock on here. I'm thinking about putting some sort of a some sort of a solids collection, uh, like a floating one that sort of rises and falls with the levels. But I've just got to find the right thing to, to use. I've got yabbies in here still. They seem to have stabilised in numbers and have enough hiding spots for them to live harmoniously and they have enough um, food which comes back via the waste from the fish tanks. Uh, uneaten food seems to come back through there. So anyway, the water goes up through there, and then this goes around to all the grow beds in the greenhouse. And uh, these points here, I've got to um, basically divide that system. If I close those two up, then the left side of the greenhouse is a separate system to the right. And I can do that every two IBCs. I can do that. So this. This one here is starting to kick in now. Uh, what I've done with these is uh, these are just treated pine. Um, it's, it's not the best thing, but I guess the water's not really running into the... Like, it's not getting wet, so... It doesn't seem to poison the fish too much, so... Uh, I'll put chains on them here so that uh, I can easily put them on like that. And I can... You know, if it drops, it drops. I wouldn't normally open like that, it scares the hell out of everything, but it's kind of a, kind of my uh, way of doing things anyway, uh, it's a bit hard to show the fish at the moment because these fish feeders are going, but I'll just pop the camera in there, it's probably a good time actually, so these, there should be probably maybe 25 trout in here, and they're, um, not going too bad, seeing it's the 13th of August, I guess they've been going for over four and a half months or so. Some of them are, some of them might actually probably eat. There's those guys, and then in this tank, we have more. In here. Not particularly interesting, I suppose. The food does seem to go back through the, uh, Goes back to the drain. Okay, I do give it a bit of a clean every now and then. I haven't cleaned these for a while. I bought these things here. I don't know if these work too well. There's a little ammonia sensor and a pH thing, but I can't say I'm really. I really can confirm they work. So yeah, trout are doing pretty good. There's a bit of muck in there. I should clean up. Uh, these are my air pumps in there. There's three 70 litre per minute pumps. And that's probably it. So I'll actually stop this video now because that's probably, that's probably enough to give everybody a go. Uh, a look at um, what I've been up to. And that's enough of me rambling on. So until next time. Um, hope everybody go, is uh, going alright. You get to do what you want to do. Catch you later.